Good morning, Sanctuary. It's time for church. It is time for church. We're so glad that you can join us this morning. As we prepare to worship, let's take a moment to pray as we center our hearts and our minds as we come together to honor and to worship God this morning. God, we give you thanks for all of the good gifts that you have given to us, for the gift of this day, for the gift of this time together, and for the gifts of one another. God, we ask that you would be with us, help us to feel a sense of your presence as we come together as a church family this morning. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together. Yeah. 
from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word I hope, my soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Through the darkness, through the fire, through my wicked heart's desire, your love remains, your love remains. Though I stumble, though I falter, through my weakness, you are strong, your love remains. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his word and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am. 
the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello, Sanctuary. Welcome again to another week. We're hoping that you're doing well, hoping that you're, if you're uh, sequestered, that you are getting everything you need and uh, hope that you're having a time for good reflection and being able to get some work done. We pray for all of you that are either facing or knowing someone that's facing illness or really being hit by the financial issues that are going on. Um, I'm, I love that we can get together like this. I wish we could get together face to face. I'm trusting that that will happen sooner than later and that this will be addressed in all the ways that are appropriate. This morning, we are reading from the gospel, and it's a celebration of the time of the what's called the Feast of the Annunciation. This is The Annunciation is the announcement of the incarnation by the angel Gabriel to Mary, that she's going to bear a son who's the, the son of God. Uh, it seems odd, seems kind of Christmassy, but the truth is it's it's a great story about how Mary is saying yes to God when she's not understanding everything that that constitutes and is open to this life that comes into the world uh, in a spectacular, amazing, supernatural way. And it fits in the context of Lent, about us being open in the midst of question, about us saying yes to God when we don't understand everything, and our anticipation of of, of the coming of Jesus through the resurrection. So it's, it does tie into this season that we call Lent. The story of Mary meeting the angel, saying yes in that context, is it's jammed with what it means to be a faithful follower of God. Mary stands, many have thought historically, as the image of the perfect disciple. The text proclaims that the angel says of her, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. So there are a number of subtle and beautiful dynamics going on in Mary's interaction with the angel, dynamics that I think we should welcome in our hearts as we follow Jesus Christ. Let me point out a couple. Let me point out three of them, actually, from this story. First, Mary is not afraid to question what's going on. I mean, when the angel says to her, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, she asks a perfectly reasonable, extremely practical, non-theological question. How can this be, since I'm a virgin? So though Mary is full of grace, her faith was not just blind assent. This means that true faith is not divorced from questioning. In fact, it turns out that faith is often strengthened by our questions, as long as they're honest questions, not mocking or cynical questions. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, questions the angel that claimed he and his wife, Elizabeth, were going to have a son. And uh, But his question is in the first part of this passage of Luke, right before this Mary story. But his question was obviously rooted in more cynicism than honesty and honest faith. And that was problematic for him. But honest questioning is really a strength to faith, a boon to faith. True faith has nothing to do with a sort of slavish, unthinking, unreflected acceptance of everything. It's forthright. It dares to admit its doubt as it considers faith. There's a great story in the Gospels about a man who is asking Jesus to heal his son. And Jesus asked the guy if he believes, because Jesus said, everything is possible for the one that believes. And then the text says, immediately the father exclaimed, I do believe. But then he said, help me overcome my unbelief. See, I think that this signals to us that the true belief owns its unbelieving, that um, the part of us that wonders if this is crazy uh, while it chooses to believe anyway is really a huge aspect of what faith is because faith isn't certainty. It's a, it's a calculated trust. Faith is a movement of the heart. It's a kind of roll of the dice, an engagement into some sort of an adventure, not absolute certainty. When you and I face the claims of faith, it's okay to say, how can this be? I mean, when I read texts like 
Romans 8, 28, and the text claims that we know that in all things God works for the good to those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. I mean, I think, how can this be? I mean, especially in the face of what we're watching unfold through this coronavirus pandemic. I mean, one of the our nurses and sanctuary works in an oncology and hospice unit in one of our local hospitals. And she was sharing of the heartache of watching patients die without loved ones in the room because of the quarantine issues that are at play. I, I know some who, in our context, who have filed bankruptcy because of the loss of income as a result of how the pandemic is slowing business. I mean, there's lots of pain and lots of loss. And then we have this text that claims in the face of it, without any condition, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who have been called according to his purpose. I think it's absolutely okay to respond. How can this be? I mean, perhaps we must respond that way. I mean, that response is not unfaithfulness. It's just simple honesty. Or, or think of a promise like Jesus gives to us in John 8, 36. It says, if the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. And maybe today you're sitting in some kind of bondage. I mean, some destructive behavior or some toxic kind of interaction you have with people. You can't seem to shake it. You keep doing it over and over again or some addiction in your life. In, in spite of whatever you face, Jesus is still speaking. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And you have every right to utter, how can this be? I mean, how am I free when all I see is how I am bound well, let me say it again. Faith is not divorced from questioning. It can actually be strengthened by your questioning. But this ask that Mary does, this wonder that she articulates, is not the only thing that Mary does in the story. Mary also takes a leap in the midst of her question. She says, be it done to me according to your word. I mean, she is saying, I may have unanswered questions, but I'm in. Mary doesn't need to have all the answers and the total certainty before she commits her life to God. In the midst of some degree of uncertainty, she says, I'm in God. This means that you and I can say yes to God, and we can say, be it done unto me according to your word, while we don't have all the answers neatly wrapped up in a bow. And I love that. I love that we can leap when we don't know for sure. One of our parishioners reached out to us this week with her, about her mother-in-law and her father-in-law. They were sent to the hospital with this virus-related business, these symptoms, and she called for prayer. And she said, she said, it's bananas. Um, if you have not heretofore, at some point in your life, you will feel disorientation like that. It's, it's going to seem like bananas for you. And when you and I are in spaces where things are bananas, we don't have time to get all of our questions answered. Yet, a choice needs to be made. Are we going to freak out? Or are we going to trust in spite of the questions? If you choose to trust, it's, it's called a leap of faith. That's what Mary models for us here. She simply says in the midst of uncertainty, be it done unto me according to your word. This leap of faith... <laughs> It has the capacity to carry all our bananas as it leaps. Then the, the last insight I wanted to give you from Mary is that her faith was rooted in freedom. Mary could have said no. I mean, in this moment where she declares she's the Lord's handmaid and willing to be all God asks her to be, she was perfectly free to do otherwise. We shouldn't romanticize the Mary story. We shouldn't believe that it was just easy peasy for her, right? I mean, Luke tells us that she was greatly troubled by all this. And as you look at the life of Mary and Joseph, it's obvious that they were not fully uh, informed about all that was really going on with her and the baby, right? She was 14 years old, 15 years old maybe, when this happened. And there was no way she could grasp all the nuances and the ramifications of that moment. I mean, she obviously got some of its implications. She certainly knew that an unmarried pregnancy would make her a social outcast. But she, did, did she really get the implications of the incarnation, that God Almighty was actually the father of this child that she carried in her womb? Probably not. I mean, when Jesus was 12, 
in the Luke narrative, he's claiming that he was supposed to stay and be in his father's house. And the text tells us that when Mary and Joseph hears Jesus talking about, they didn't understand what he was talking about. So though there was mystery in all this, again, Mary said, yes, she took the leap of faith as a perfectly free person. She chose to use her perfect freedom to enter the story that brought salvation to all humanity. So I would suggest that in the midst of all the uncertainty surrounding this pandemic and all the questions that are popping up and all the ways that um, seem crazy, God is speaking to us as he did to Mary. Um, he's saying that he is with us, that we are not to fear, that he will provide for us and that he will care for us. We have every right to question that, not cynically, not mockingly, but honestly. But beyond the honest questions, will you leap into the arms of God and dare to trust him in spite of your questions? Will you say, be it done unto me according to your word? Remember, you don't have to. I mean, you are perfectly free to be in fear and God will still love you. But if you choose freely to leap, you'll be following Mary's lead. And make no mistake about it, though, there are no guarantees in the leap of faith. You will not be certain that all will be well. There's only the comforting promise that God will be with us in whatever. God promises to be with us in illness and healing, but also in illness and death. I mean, we all love certainty, especially in religion, but faith does not give us that. It does not put us in control. Faith trusts in a God who is present, who is with us. It's rooted in texts like the one from Romans 8 that says, who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? I mean, will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? And he goes on, just as it is written and forever remains written, for your sake we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, Paul writes, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, he finishes, beyond the doubt is what he's saying, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And these are one of those texts that I absorbed when I was just first coming to Christ. So beautiful. Nothing can separate us from God. That's the heart of it. I mean, again, remember faith isn't certitude. It's just calculated trust. It's, it's a movement of the heart, a roll of the dice, an engagement into the great adventure that we can have with this being we cannot see. So my encouragement to you from Mary, from the text, adventure well this week. Stay safe. Keep loving God. We will get through this. Amen. In this season where it's so easy to feel disconnected and separate from one another, will you join me now as we share these words of faith that unite us? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, distance cannot separate us as we are one in Christ. Let's unite our hearts and minds and pray together. God of new life, you show us a field of dry, dead things and bring it to life. 
As we look around a dead end world, devoid of public life, reveal yourself in the midst of it. Where we feel dry and arid, refresh us. Let your life break through in the midst of our toil and sustain us with your provision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our hearts to you. We lift our prayers to you. We lift our hearts to you. We lift our prayers to you. God of patient revelation, as we exist in this indefinite time of waiting, call to mind our desire to wait on you. Guide us to your redemption, cheer our hearts, occupy our hands. Show us creative and tangible ways to love you and our neighbors. Grant us the grace to love what you command and the patience to desire what you promise, so that our hearts will be fixed on your true joy, even as the world fluctuates under our feet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our hearts God of on-time resurrection, we remember Lazarus, who died and who was mourned, whom you loved and returned to life. We remember your desire to see your creation live and thrive. We pray for all those affected by this global pandemic, for those fighting the virus, for those who have succumbed to it, and for those whose lives are disrupted by it. We pray for those whose employment is now in question, for those who can't afford a stockpile provision, and for those for whom the word home is not a comfort. Lord, meet these people in their distress and let your church meet their needs in a physical way. May your name be glorified in this time and always. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey guys, it's time for Saint, for Grace and Peace, and um, we aren't going to be doing it the way that we usually do it, so we're just um, text it on your phone or like anything on anything that you could text on, and text your friends that you know, text your friends that that might um, go to church or something. What should they text them? Of like grace and peace or like what you're happy for them or something like that. Who do you want to say grace and peace to? Um, Shelby. <laughs> so grace and peace, Shelby. Hello, Sanctuary family. I'm Devon. I just wanted to say thank you for supporting Sanctuary financially. It's your constant love and support that ensures this community will be here for our generation and for generations to come. The best way to give is to text Sanctuary Tulsa, all one word, to 77977 and follow the prompts and push pay. As we prepare our hearts to give this morning, join me in the liturgy of contentment. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. We bring nothing into this world, and we take nothing out of it. We who call Jesus Lord devote ourselves to resisting greed, which plunges the human heart into ruin and pierces it with many griefs. We are determined to practice generosity with free hearts, fixing our hope on God and not the uncertainty of wealth. We desire to be rich in good deeds and willing to share all that we have, laying up for ourselves treasure that will not decay, but will shine in the age to come. Grace and peace. 
As we prepare to come to the table, let's remember that none of us come to this moment perfectly, that we've all come to this moment with things left undone, with things that we ought to have done, as well as things that we did that we shouldn't have done. So let's just for a moment, close our eyes and think of those ways in which we have failed to love God and failed to love our neighbor. And together we confess, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now receive this absolution. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let's come to the table together. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God, our Maker. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, so therefore, we praise you. We join our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Because you, gracious God, have been faithful to us, we will be faithful to Jesus. He promised to be with those who met in his name. This we believe. He promised to hear the prayers of faithful people. This we believe. He said that in the communion of bread and wine, he would be present to us as we remembered him. This we celebrate. So God, we ask that you would send your spirit among us and upon this bread and this wine, that we may taste and see your goodness, be embraced by your love, and be engaged in your service. As Jesus did, so we do. We break this bread, we share this wine. We believe that he who lived, died, and rose again for us will meet us here. Graciously nourish us, O Christ so that we who try to follow you may receive food for the journey and be bound in solidarity with all who walk in your way. Amen. Friends, take this bread and share in this wine. In these gifts, 
Christ comes to us with love from God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let's pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Amen. Hey everyone, we have reached a special time in our service with a special segment I like to call Announcements with Miss Shelby. In this segment, I, Miss Shelby, share the announcements with you, the sanctuary community. Our first announcement, if you are a family with young or old children, or if you are just a person who wants to stay extra connected with the families in our sanctuary community, we invite you to join the Facebook group, Sanctuary Family. We share all kinds of resources throughout the weeks, printables, memory verse challenges, and we have different times that we share God sightings with each other, and it's been an awesome place for us to connect. This Wednesday and every Wednesday during this time, Miss Lily's going to be sharing a Bible story for our preschool children, so you'll definitely want to tune in for that. If you have experienced any trouble, any uh, hardships, or have specific needs in this time, or if you are looking for ways to help others in need, you can go to our sanctuary website. It's www.sanctuarytulsa.com, and you can reach out to us there for any needs or things that you may uh, want to help others with. Um, we also have something that we do every day, Monday through Friday. Um, it's called the Eights, and we meet at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. each day. Um, in the mornings, we share in um, a time of prayer. We follow the morning prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. It involves some beautiful liturgies, um, as well as some scripture readings and an open time for us to share prayer requests and pray with one another. And in the evenings, we have more of a relaxed devotional time where we have someone from our community or a guest share. This week, uh, we have for eight minutes, uh, we'll have um, David Gunger sharing this week. We'll have Father Brent, Father Paul, and myself, um, and Bishops Owen um, coming in, and so we're really excited about that. Um, and that's all. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. 
Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now receive this benediction. May Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace.